Well, hi, it's Warren, uh, back with a, uh, another Big Brother video. It's the 10th of October, and I just thought I'd give you some more thoughts on what's been going on. Um, there won't be any Big Brother this weekend, of course. There'll be no Sunday show, because, uh, of course, the block has to go into a self-loving I don't know, hug fest about how wonderful it is uh, in its final episode. So, uh, anyway, I suppose the good news is for Big Brother fans, uh, it of course uh, will be done after Sunday. Uh, so, of course, we can just get into enjoying our favourite show. And uh, well, that's good news for me anyway. I love it. Uh, now, I just actually realised looking in the video, I'm looking a little bit scar. Hmm. Bit of a flashback to the 80s there. Look, if I break into a rendition from the specials or madness, i uh, probably call for uh, medical help. or probably need it. Anyway, let's move on to real stuff. Okay, um, now, first of all, uh, for a few rumours and gossip, um, well, we are going to see a new intruder. Um, yes, uh, she has been revealed. Um, basically, uh, she is, uh, well, obviously she's a woman, I keep calling her she, uh, and also Russian. Um, now, I think this is going to be interesting. I have to admit, look, I got a lot of American friends who often tell me, um, you know, how much they really like the Australian accent. It's something I've never really quite understood. I always thought our accents are... Uh, quite rough, you know. I mean, after the Germans, um, I really never quite got why people actually liked the Australian accent. But I have to admit to you that Eastern European Russian, um, hmm, I'll tell you what, I'm excited. Um, <laughs> we won't go any further down that path. We'll try to keep this PG. Um, so anyway, she will be coming in. Now, I don't know what day she'll be coming in. It was rumoured that it was going to be over the weekend, but look, I don't really think that's going to happen. I think it's probably more likely to either be Monday or Wednesday uh, that we'll actually see her go into the house. Um, now, next rumour that was going around, uh, was going all over Twitter yesterday, was of course that Travis had been kicked off the show for violence. Um, now, this of course was absolute well, it was just a rumour. It was absolutely nothing more than that. There was nothing to base it up. And we know that, of course, it's not true because the voting lines for Travis are still fully operational. Um, and if you don't know where I'm going uh, with that, um, just think of horse racing. Um, you can't bet on a horse after it's been scratched. So, look, I think we can basically put that one to bed. Um, it's just a rumour. Um, these sorts of rumours fly around every year. Um, we just have to deal with it. But of course, they're a bit exciting when you hear about them at first. Anyway, let's now move on to the Cat and Lawson saga. Uh, yes, it is still going on, but it's not still going on from Cat and Lawson. No, look, these guys have admitted they did the wrong thing. They have said they're sorry, and they know there's going to be consequences. And for me personally, I just think it's time that we should move on. But Big Brother is not going to let them get away that easy. Um, they have been milking this story now for three days, and it seems that they are still going to milk more of it. Um, I really don't know how four odd minutes of footage, uh, of which only about, what, 10 seconds are actually really, really bad, um, how much they can actually keep dragging this out. Um, it's, it's got to the stage where it's almost looking like they're almost attempting to blackmail um, Lawson and Kat uh, to see how they react uh, to sort of keep these ratings up. Um, and for me, I'm starting to have a little bit of a problem with this. Not with the situation between Kat and Lawson themselves, but more, in fact, with how Channel 9 and Big Brother are actually dealing with it. Um, it's interesting that in PG-rated shows, um, we have, of course, you know, we've removed swearing, we've removed nudity, uh, so it's all nice and family-friendly. But things like bullying and blackmail seem to be quite acceptable to Channel 9 uh, to show to children. Now, I don't know if you've got kids, uh, but I'll tell you what, when I was raising my daughter, I would much rather have, of her to have seen a few boobs and a few bums than to actually see people encouraging blackmailing. Um, look, it's a bit more of a moral issue. I'll leave it up to you. But I really think this story has to end. Leave them alone. They're going to have to face the consequences themselves. Can we move on to something else? I mean, seriously, I'm over it. Now, the hotel challenge. Well, this had everything, I suppose, that Big Brother really wanted. Uh, basically, it had lots of drama, it had lots of humour, and, of course, you know, it even, you know, brought a couple of people to the point of tears, and, in fact, possibly even a couple of people from 
a bit of a, shall we say, discussion between Travis and Sam, I actually wondered how soon Travis was going to actually throw a punch. Um, it, it really did give Big Brother everything they wanted. But one of the big problems here uh, is that I, I saw um, a really good tweet uh, actually yesterday uh, from someone who was actually saying that this uh, task reminded them a lot of the Stanford um, uh, prison experiment that was carried out in the United States. And I have to say there is real similarities here because we really did see exactly the same thing happening. Um, if you don't know what the um, Stanford uh, um, a prison experiment is. It's where you take a group of people and you basically dress half up as prison guards, half up as prisoners, and observe them. And you will actually find that the ones dressed as prison guards will actually start to dominate and abuse the ones who are actually dressed as prisoners, um, even though they're not actually prisoners. Um, and we saw really the same thing happen here. The um, housemates who were the house, you know, the hotel guests really did start to take advantage and um, of the people who were the um, the hotel staff. Um, now, Travis, I think, had to be really one of the worst um, in regards to this. Um, he really did start to uh, abuse it and just really thought it was his own, really did. And I think Leo summed it up. Travis actually thought it was a real hotel. Now, that doesn't surprise me, to be honest. Um, I mean, Travis, I mean, what can we really say? The guy can barely speak English. Um, so, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I had to laugh, I mean, to, to be truthful, we, I mean, so far, uh, when they were doing the English lesson, uh, segment, obviously a bit of a joke on how Travis speaks, um, in the treehouse, I was amazed to see Aisha's face when Travis actually called his girlfriend an Australian, and she had to say, no babe, I'm a New Zealander, he doesn't even know where his own girlfriend comes from, um, this guy is just, uh, but to be honest with you, I'm over Travis. You know, he's not funny. He really isn't funny. He doesn't understand that we're not laughing with him. We're laughing at him. Um, and I really did have a problem too that when the, the task was over and uh, these topics about how the um, the house guests uh, actually behaved, everybody was sort of quite understanding and sympathetic. Not maybe necessarily totally agreeing, but definitely sympathetic and understanding. All except one. Guess who it was? It was Travi Boy. Of course, who else? The world owes Travi a living in his mind. And um, let's just forget about talking about Travis. Honestly, I'm so over him. Um, now, one other interesting thing that came out of this table, two actually, I should say, first of all, was some of the comments actually about Lisa. And I was really, really surprised about this, um, even though obviously now she's left the show. But it was actually said that she was the only one, the only one, of all of the people playing the house guests who didn't actually abuse the privilege. Um, I was really, really surprised by that. It was not what I was expecting to hear at all. Um, and uh, I may have to start changing my opinion actually about Lisa. I've been reading a little bit more about her in the social pages and um, yeah, I think I've given her a bit of a hard time actually. And um, anyway, such as life will move on. Now, the um, next situation was, of course, the day spa. Uh, this got Twitter going absolutely nuts. Um, the question was, was Aisha assaulted by Sam and Priya, uh, or was it just simply a bit of a practical harmless joke that got out of control? Um, well, look, I think if the day spa had, of, let's say, been carried out on David, for argument's sake, then I think everyone would have simply have laughed it off as a bit of harmless fun. I think where the difference comes here is the fact that um, Aisha's a girl. And I really do believe that... I don't actually think or agree with some of the statements which are saying that this was assault, but I do think it was borderline. It really did become borderline. Um, Sam really did manhandle her very, very physically. Um, and, you know, she is a young woman. She is basically totally exposed. And a lot of people basically have said, well, she just sort of said no. Well, I don't think it's that easy. Um, ask lots of victims of crime. Um, it is not that simple just to say no. Um, the world just doesn't work like that. Um, I do, however, think that some of the um, uh, sort of arguments going around that, look, this was sexual assault and, and things like that, I do think that that's maybe going a little bit over the top. But I do think that um, 
they did push the boundaries and push the boundaries to the limit. And the other thing too is that Sam seems to be getting most of the bad press about this, but I think Priya, um, we have to be honest, Priya is equally as guilty. She went along with the whole situation and she did not have a problem with the situation until Aisha basically started to cry and complain after the whole thing was over. Um, I did think, once again, oh God, we had to come back to Travis again, don't we? Uh, where he had to man up, <laughs> come on guys, man up, and uh, go out and address Sam uh, for obviously assaulting his girlfriend. Um, yeah, look, I mean, this guy has got to learn when to actually take a step back. Um, I, look, I'm actually not 100% convinced that the relationship... Well, I've said I don't think Aisha and Travis will actually last as soon as they leave the house. I'm actually starting to wonder now whether it will even last the full distance of the show. You can just see her eyes continually rolling back in her head when Travis starts to talk. Um, and I, I don't know. Look, we will wait and see what happens. The thing is, though, for her, is it just a showmance or is it for real? Um... I don't know. I'm rambling again, and I really should stop. But just one last thing. See, I'm obsessed with Travis this episode. Oh, I don't know why. Anyway, um, I'm really getting sick of this Hugh Hefner attitude that Travis has. Basically, lying back in the bed, wearing nothing but his underwear, having three women, you know, lazing themselves all over him. Um, it's, it's like watching Girls of the Playboy Mansion rather than Big Brother. It's starting to, for me, become a little bit disturbing. And, um, all right, I promise next time I will not mention Travis again, all right? I think I've just got a bee in my bonnet about him. Um, you know, I've had it about Gemma before. I've had it about Lisa before. I think at the moment I've just dotted about Travis at the moment, so I do apologize for that. All right, what else have we actually got? Um, well, I suppose we'll just finish off with basically, are we looking now at a house divided? Um, after the hotel, um, uh, I suppose, fiasco, which didn't work, of course, they didn't pass it, um, and it's not surprising. It's not surprising at all. Um, the, you know, are we going to see two houses, one controlled by Travis and one possibly controlled by Leo? But I don't know. It's, I think it's a little bit too early to tell. And it really comes down now, I think, to how the housemates that acted as the guests actually now start to reinteract uh, with the people that were the, um, the staff. And I think that Sky is immediately going to come racing back to uh, Leo anyway, um, so it, it really only leaves a couple of people. I, I think David actually, from what I can see, quite appreciated actually the effort that the staff had actually gone to. Um, I don't think Aisha actually got it quite at first, um, but I think as the conversations went on, I think she started to realise that... Um, there was actually something to what they were saying. Uh, Travis, well, he has absolutely no idea. He basically sort of thinks that they're all, uh, you know, all... <sighs> yes. And uh, Kat, I think, I don't know if Kat really gets it as well, but I think she definitely sympathises with what they actually went through. Now, we'll just finish off with the ratings. Um, now, we are back up over the 600 level. Yep, we've actually passed 700,000 viewers. Uh, so this is great news, guys. Um, the more people we can get watching this show, the show will return next year. Because let's face it, it's about ratings, which transfers into advertising dollars. As long as they get the ratings, they will bring the show back. So, come on, guys, let's keep watching. This was the most rambling... <laughs> video I have done yet. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'll try to do better next time. Cheers.